G'day folks. Uh, well, I, while I research this little uh, IBM's problem, I figured I'd have a quick look at this amplifier that I found today. It's pretty rough. Um, it's been out in the weather or something for a while. It's made by Proton, the same company that made my first um, LCD television. It's a Taiwanese company, pretty respectable. That's uh, yeah, D D275 power amp, old school stuff. It's got all the pinouts on it, which is nice. Yeah, 300 watt stereo power amplifier, 4 ohms. Use 4 or 8 ohm speakers. Yeah, made in Taiwan. Not too bad. So, dynamic power on demand. Okay. Well, I'm going to open it up and give it a good clean. And then we'll look at getting some power to it. It's easy enough. The fuse isn't blown, that's a good sign. Yeah, okay. And yeah, this IBM's not booting from CD-ROM. I'm trying to install Windows XP on a new hard drive and it ain't playing the game. And I told it to boot from CD, so I might try changing the ROM drive after I've had a look at this. I'm just curious about this amp, that's all. <laughs> I like amplifiers. Okay, it's fairly straightforward. Um, it's got some decent quality caps in there, like the main DC ones, but these ones here look a bit sad. That one's blowing its bottom out. That one's a 10, <laughs> is it 10 micro or 10 volt, 100 microfarad. It's two of them, and that one there, that 47 mic 16, is also looking a bit cooked. So they're going to have to be replaced, which isn't all that easy because I've got to take all these heatsink clamps and everything off. It's a fair bit of work, but yeah, we can do it. Everything else looks fairly decent. Like an inductor or something under there. Yeah. There's a bit of gorilla snot that's gone conductive down there as well. Nasty stuff. It's this adhesive that they used to put on stuff in the nine electronics in the 1980s. And it goes brown and crispy and absorbs moisture, so it becomes sem semi-conductive. And it causes all kinds of problems. So yeah, I've got to scrape that off. But overall it's not too bad. It's a decent amp. Uh, if I can fix it up properly and make it work properly, I'll probably end up going in the RAV. Definitely need a proper amp for that. Oh, actually, no, I need a high level input amp, not a low level. Oh, well, I'll find a use for this, that's, that's for sure. Well, it's not pretty, but I've got it out. <laughs> There's heatsink paste everywhere. That's alright. I'm going to put new um, pads on it. The old uh, mica sheet just came apart and flakes. So, yeah, it's going to get new uh, thermal material if it works. Well, I have to anyway before I put it back together, but I can always recover what I put in there if it doesn't work out. Don't see any reason why not. The solder work on this is pretty good. So, yeah, I'm just going to we'll resolder a few spots, like that pin there is dry jointed. There's a couple of little light spots, particularly on the outputs. That one's dry jointed as well. And uh, yeah, I'll change whatever caps I can and just go from there. This side here is partially removed. I can remove it. I'll have to, to check those other caps anyway, but I'm just doing it one end at a time because it's got these big rectifiers stuck on there and one of the screws is already stripped. So I don't think they're coming off, at least not easy anyway. I can also replace these uh, input jacks eventually. They're just soldered straight onto the board through leads. So it's quite easy, it's well easily assembled. It's a bit untidy, but it's it's not too bad. Yeah, I'm beginning to wonder if uh, caps are the least of this thing's worries. That wire there has completely desoldered itself. Well, it's broken away anyway, I don't think it was soldered right to begin with. But dry joint, dry joint, oh there's one there. More dry joints in there. Uh, where do I started? I started soldering in here. That's what they should look like. Hmm. Anyway, I'll go over it. I've already checked the um there's a there's four hundred volt ten microfarad no hundred volt forty seven mic caps in there. 
even though they look old and dishevelled, they actually read better than one of the new ones that I've got. Or well, not new, but newer ones. This is a second-hand recovered one. And um, it's the only one I've got, so I can't replace them anyway. And they actually read better. And they're, they're old-school Matsushita caps, so that's to be expected. Yeah, various other solder joints need to be redone. That's normal. And the caps, big caps, is at 10,000 microfarad, 80 volt each. Nice. Alright, well, most of these outputs were completely dry jointed. Typical of an, a car amp because uh, you've got to remember they're subject to a lot more vibration. Um, yeah, it should be good. No doubt I'll find more as I go over the board checking caps, but I've got the main ones. Yeah, this thing can be a lot happier. I'll do the main caps and everything. Yeah, it's going to be so happy with me, I'm going to put it back together again and it's going to work for me first time. <laughs> that funny noise in the background is police scanner. Not from here though. It's a US police scanner. Coming through the geekgroup.org live stream on, uh, I think it's Justin TV. Um, yeah, they've always got something interesting going on. Probably doing a hangout tonight, so that'll be fun. Oh, look, I just found a big one here. Look at that. I can always get my fingernail under that that crack. What does that go to? Oh, that goes to one of the blue wires, which is probably one of the outputs. What was blue? Yeah, right speaker. Positive. Yeah, that's not good. As bad as that cap looks, it's still within spec. <laughs> yeah. It's a hundred... hundred microfarad, ten volt. So by the book... hundred microfarad, ten volt can read up to two ohms. This one's 0.5 ohms. So that's actually better, it's less, less internal resistance. Higher resistance or short, it'll come up and tell me, but that's fine. Alright, all the other caps checked out fine. I replaced a couple of slightly sus looking ones, but they were still technically okay. So yeah, it's good. Uh, I'm using this recovered uh, insulating material as well. You can use this without heatsink paste, but I just left the paste on there anyway to create an extra um, conductive barrier or conductive uh, surface. So, yeah, everything's pretty well right. I'm just putting a bit of fresh paste on there and shoving this down behind them. If anyone knows what it is and where to buy it in a roll, let me know. It is lightly reinforced with fibre. And it's also uh, it's quite quite heavy for what it is because it contains um, thermal compound, but it's just in like a gel mat form and it works really well. This came out of a Minolta digital copier power supply. I've got a ton of these and I just figured I'd rip these um, sheets out from behind the outputs. There's one still in there, and uh, yeah, same stuff as what you often see in plasma TV inverter supplies. It's got a very high breakout breakout voltage. It's really good stuff. So yeah, if anyone knows where I can buy rolls of this stuff, let me know, because it is much easier to work with than this bloody mica sheet crap. Mica sheet's pretty much obsolete now. This stuff is kicking ass. Anyway, onward. All right, well that came together pretty good. It's nice. Fairly easy rebuild. Uh, haven't powered it yet, so <laughs> fingers crossed it actually works, but I don't see any reason why not. I'd say dry joints were the main issue with this one. Everything else seems to be fine. Clean the input sockets up a little bit with some sandpaper for now. Uh, bridging is off. Um, low, high level. Um, high level. Oh, it does have high input. There we go. I'm an idiot. <laughs> It does take high input, it's just on this plug here, not here. That's low level only, but I can put high into it. So I can use a DVD player to test this. High input right is yellow, high input uh, left is white, and high input negative is um, 
black. So that's easy enough. White, yellow, and black. There we go. What's orange? Orange is remote, of course. Remote power on. I'm going to need to be able to trigger that as well. It should just be 12 volts to the remote power on for it to uh, work. At least that's what my old amps were. And black is ground, red is 12 volts, so that's the heavy cables. And then blue and blue with red is right channel. Yeah, so it's just a two channel stereo amplifier, not a surround amp. Yeah, nice. So I'll probably cut this plug off. I don't have any other connectors to go into that, so I'll cut this plug off and make my own terminal block. And then I'll put some power to it and see what happens. Either it'll work or it won't, but it'll work. Hmm, everything's back together again and we got power. Let's see what happens. Yes, it lives. There's a bit of a hiss from the input from the de cheapo DVD, but I'm running a AC powered appliance into a DC one. I'm going to have to uh, try this on a different source with some better speakers because this thing will probably blow the cones out of those little things, even though it's only 230, 260 watts, whatever it is. It's still loud enough. <laughs> it's got high and low input, so yeah, little Rav's going to love this amp. Um, yeah, like I said before, even these old looking caps, they checked out better than some of the new ones that I have. Not just Rico ones, but new ones. They're original Matsushita capacitors. Even these ones here are fine. The main big DC tanks are fine. No, it's good. Power LED works. Yeah, awesome. I have a, I have a car amplifier. It's a proper 1980s one too. So, yeah, I've just left the bridge completely off, as it has been all the time. And then, uh, yeah, high level is on. I did try it with low level, but this, even though this DVD has volume output control, it's not high enough to uh, work properly with um, high level input. Like, I have to crank the amp up to maximum and it starts clipping, but if I go to low level input, everything's fine, so, yeah. Should do, should do just fine. Anyway, thanks for watching and uh, stay tuned for more. This is awesome. I'm just going to put the cover back on, give it a really good clean up and that's it. Done.